could you um, tell me us uh, what Eric Flowers means to that offensive line and where he's at as far as uh, his play uh, currently? Yeah, you know, he's a, a veteran, uh, and one of the most veteran players we have up there. And um, the one thing that's great about him is uh, his leadership and enthusiasm on game day. I mean, he, he really bring, brings a lot of enthusiasm to, to the game every, every week. And um, he's excited about scoring. He's excited about winning. And uh, that's what you want out of those guys. And he's, he's been a very good stabilizing force for us up there. He's played well so far. And I expect him to continue to play well and, and even improve on a couple little things that, that uh, coach has him working on. Adam. Uh, good morning, Chan. Uh, when you were envisioning to his second start, I'm pretty sure you didn't envision him going without three wide receivers, two running backs and his position coach. <laughs> and yet he went out there and, and played at a high level of, uh, what was the difference from week one to week two for Tua? And how encouraged were you that all he had to overcome uh, as a player, he was able to do so? You know, I, uh, I think probably the best answer for that is going to come from him. Uh, but from my perspective, uh, the, as the game slows down, as he plays more, the, and I said this last week, but I believe it's the truth, as he plays more, the game will slow down. He's able to see things better. He's able to feel the game. He has a tremendous feel for the game. And um, that, that allows him to see some things and do some things and throw the ball in some spots that uh, other people might not do. So uh, I, I think that he just went out and played the game. He, he didn't care who was there, who wasn't there. He, he was playing the game. And that's what you like about him is he, he doesn't think about adversity. He thinks about, okay, how can we go be successful? And um, that's, that'll carry a person a long way. Josh. Hi, Chan. I wanted to ask about Savan Ahmed. Uh, you know, he led the, the team in, uh, or the running backs rather in, in snaps. what do you think of his performance? It felt like there were some plays there where, uh, you know, he showed some explosion that we obviously hadn't seen before. Yeah, he uh, he had some he had some good plays, and he has some things he's got to work on. It was his first time out, and uh, he, he's got some things that we'll have to improve upon and talk about and and get him better at. But he does show what you just said. He does show some explosion, uh, and it, it was good to have that and be able to see you know, uh, a short run turn into a longer run uh, with that uh, burst that he has to be able to get on the edge. So uh, I, I think he'll improve. Uh, I hope uh, that all these guys that are playing for their first and second time, the second time they go out there, uh, I hope they improve and continue to improve. And he had a, he'd run the ball well the first half, so he, he played most of the second half. Steve. Chan, we're doing a, a story on uh, uh, around the league uh, rookies at midseason. And I wanted to ask you uh, with uh, no exhibition season, very little off season, I'm wondering at the point, rookies in general, I know it's hard to generalize, but do you think they're still behind and will be behind all year? Or at this point, I mean, have they, have they caught up in their development? How do you, how, what do you feel about that? I think a guy that's played every game uh, is uh, pretty well caught up at this point. Um, I think you get eight games into the season, uh, halfway through the season, uh, you should be caught up if you played in every ball game. Uh, those guys that haven't, that are being thrown in there for the first times, um, they're, they're behind. They were behind because they haven't played early and, and they'll be behind and it'll probably take them about eight games to get fully uh, uh, aware of everything that's going on and, and what they've got to do. Um, and 
you know, if you haven't played in the first few, um, those rookies will be fresher than the year because uh, the guys don't realize a 16 game season, what that does to you. Soften. Hey coach, uh, what you said just now about, you know, playing eight games and being fully aware makes me excited about what you are going to see from two of the next six games. Um, you know, what do you think he has to prove, you know, moving forward has to show. And I also wanted to ask you about communicating with, with coach Godsey during that game. It seemed to be that he filled in um, for Robbie Brown on the coaching staff there during the game. Yeah, that, that worked. Uh, that worked very well. Uh, we were fortunate in that coach Godsey hadn't um, been available earlier in the year and that we had two coaches who had coached the tight ends so that, we needed George to come over and, and fill in for this. And those guys had experience working with the tight ends to be able to deal with them on game day. So it, it, it worked out uh, in a very good scenario for us to have George available to talk to, the, to, to me and to the quarterbacks and to do the communication. So that worked very well. And I forgot the other part of the question you asked. Yeah, Coach, just to, you know, you, you said something about, uh, you know, eight games in, players are going to get a lot more comfortable. Um, yeah. You know, what, what, what does Tua, you know, have to, to show you more in the next six games? What are some next strides you want to see him take after Sunday's performance? The, the next strides are he's got he's to gotta see and understand defenses uh, more and more. And, and that just comes from doing it. Uh, you, you can't, you know, we worked against the same defense all off season. So being, you didn't have any preseason games to go say, okay, this is what another team does. This is what another team does. He's getting that on the fly. So uh, I think just understanding defenses, what they're trying to do, how they're trying to attack you, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, um, those type of things will be uh, the strides I hope he makes here in the next few weeks. Cam? Hey, Chan, I guess uh, with, with everything that Tua has been through, I guess, over the last year, do you feel like he's back to where maybe you were seeing him on tape in college as far as his playmaking ability? It looks like it to me. I, I can't I, I can't see a real difference. Uh, so, um, you know, physically is the one thing that uh, you had the concern about. And I think he kind of relieved all our, our, our thoughts about that the, the other night. Travis. Hey, Coach. I wanted to ask you about uh, Adam Shaheen. I know he had the extension a couple of weeks ago, and, and we saw Durham Smythe out in that Niners game and then leave this past game. I'm curious to get your take on the impact he's had in that tight end room and the confidence level you have in him to elevate him into a more prominent role if someone like Mike or Durham is not available ahead of him. Yeah, uh, I think we have a great deal of confidence in, in Adam and what he can do. He you know, he's coming here, he's learned the blocking schemes, he's blocked uh, well, um, you know, I mean, we everybody can get better at that, but he's, he's done a good job there, and uh, he's he's a very good pass receiver, so uh, he's been a big plus to our tight end room, and I, we have a great deal of confidence in what uh, he might be able to do in the future for us. All right, we have time for one more, we'll go to Joe. Good morning to you, Chan. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, poise and maturity as it relates to uh, being 22. It kind of feels like an old soul to me. Um, when you think, can you think of an example of on-field poise and maybe uh, off-field maturity since you've met the guy? Well, um, it, it's, it's hard to me to talk about on the field on game day, uh, but in practice, I see the, the way he interacts with the other players uh, on our team, and and you see a real maturity there, uh, the way he handles you know, his interactions day to day on a day to day basis. Uh, so, is that on the field or is that off the field? I don't know which one that is, but that he really has a great deal of maturity and and how he builds relationships with other people uh, on, the, on the football team. 
Morning. Uh, uh, first of all, your, your thoughts on an, a, a defensive effort. You got another defensive touchdown, but, uh, the, you know, gave up more points than you have in week, weeks past. Was it a function of Arizona just being really good or what were some of the things that went wrong? And, and specifically with your, with your corners, uh, we've obviously seen them, seen them play at a, at a high level throughout the season. Were you kind of surprised with some of the passes they gave up in the DPIs? Uh, well, again, like every week, you know, I mean, you, you kind of start with a, a self-evaluation and obviously, you know, it, you know, it's, I need to do a better job of putting our players in better positions. Uh, we, we could surely execute uh, better. Um, so, you know, we're all going to work hard to improve that and make sure that we do a better job. I would say, you know, the Arizona Cardinals uh, offense, I mean, that's an outstanding offense. Uh, Coach Kingsbury, I, you can't say enough good things about him. Uh, he makes it extremely hard on the defense. Um, so nothing but respect for them. They're very good offense. Uh, you know, and like I said, you know, we ended up, you know, making the plays that we needed to make, but obviously there's room for improvement. And again, I, I would say that, you know, I, I could definitely do a better job putting the players in better position. Uh, I need to work hard to do that. And I, I think as a group, we could execute a little bit better. Travis. Uh, hey, good morning, coach. I, I want to go back to the fourth down stop late in the game there. To the untrained eye, it looks like both Zach Sealer and Elandon Roberts were on the scene first, but I was hoping that maybe you could give us an expert opinion on how that play was able to be successful for you guys at such a big spot in the game. Yeah, I, I think it was, uh, you know, a, a group effort there. We got good execution. Uh, we were able to stop the play. Uh, I can appreciate the question. Uh, I usually don't go into specifics on plays. I, I just think it puts you at a competitive disadvantage um, to talk about scheme. Uh, but, uh, you know, our players were able to execute on that play. Uh, obviously, Zach and Alandon were part of that. Um, Xavier Howard got in there on that play. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a big play for us in the game. Um, and uh, I was glad to see that we executed it well. Cameron? Hey, Josh, uh, I know this week was different for you guys because you had a few consistent coaches that weren't able to come with you. How did that uh, affect maybe how you were flowing through the defense and, and how you guys went about your, uh, your, your normal game process? Well, I think, you know, Flo's done a very good job of, you know, from all the way uh, before we started at training camp, uh, making sure that we had uh, contingency plans in place uh, kind of a next man up mentality, uh, whatever that entailed, um, you know, and I think everybody that, uh, was asked to do things did it, uh, well, uh, you know, again, I think, you know, our, uh, Kyle Johnston, Brandon Shore, th those guys, you know, they, they, they did an outstanding job of making sure that, uh, our protocols, uh, were being followed and that the safety of our coaches and our team were at the forefront. And um, ultimately, uh, you know, we had enough guys to go to the game. Everybody that was on the next man up mentality was there. And um, we were able to get a win on Sunday. Dave? Sorry about that. I'm just curious what you see uh, moving ahead um, this weekend with the with the Chargers and, and and obviously a rookie quarterback who really doesn't look like a rookie. What are you seeing in him? Well, again, uh, we're, we're facing a very good offense this week. I mean, I mean, you can take the record and throw it out the window. Uh, these guys have been in every game. They could have won every game. Um, they, they've moved the ball well, they've ran the ball well, they've thrown the ball well, they've had explosive plays, they've got good players, um, they got good scheme. Um, it, it's going to be a big challenge for us. Um, you know, they, they've used numerous different backs due to injury. All of them have been successful. Um, they've, uh, you know, they, they've got a loaded skill receiver group. Uh, they got good tight ends. Uh, and, and they're, they're really running at an efficient pace. Uh, it, it's going to be a big challenge for us this week. This is a very good offense. Um, so, 
you know, and that's that's what we're working all morning on is, you know, like I said earlier, we're just trying to find ways to put our players in position to succeed. And, and we got a huge challenge this week. This is a very good football team coming here this week. Stafford. Hey, Coach, I wanted to just go back to the performance by the coaching staff. Um, you know, was there anybody in particular that, you, you know, want to give some praise to that, that took on a bigger role on the sideline there, maybe helping you guys get in and out of huddles? Getting guys on the field, you know, playing, you know, real big vocal role on the on the on the defense on the sidelines. Well, I think you know, like you know, Flo probably mentioned earlier in the week, it's really a team effort. Um, I, I think you know, just like we ask our players to be, we ask our coaches to be the same way. It's pretty much uh, a, a selfless effort. Uh, everybody's just trying to do what we can do to win the game. Um, you know, and I, I think. Uh, Everybody that was, you know, involved, um, you know, whether they were on the field, not on the field, uh, everybody was doing everything they could uh, to help us win the game. Barry. Hi, Josh. I wondered if uh, Jason Strobridge had the practice work improved to the point that you all want to use him last week. Did that contribute to why he played and, and how you thought he did? And just also Raekwon Davis, how he's played the last couple weeks. Well, I think for, I think for both guys, uh, uh, Jason and Raekwon, I, I think uh, you know, like we ask all our guys to do, uh, we ask them to to try to improve on a weekly basis. Um, you know, uh, Jason actually, you know, he got some opportunities this week. Um, there's some good things. Uh, there's some things that we can correct. Um, but uh, you know, and and again, we're we're gonna just keep trying to get better and better each week because you know the the games. Uh, you know, we don't have any easy games on the schedule. Um, you know, every week's hard, and uh, the goal is to win each week. Uh, so it's important for us to improve. Uh, we know other teams are improving. Uh, so, you know, we, we got to set the bar pretty high for us. And, uh, you know, and especially for young guys, you hope that that, that improvement comes at a rapid pace. Uh, both of those guys are working hard to do that, and uh, we just need to continue to get them better as we go. Armando. Coach, I'm wondering uh, where you place yards allowed in your priority list of things that, um, you know, are important to you. At the end of the day, when you look at the, the, the stats, look at the game film. Well, I, I would say in order, uh, I mean, for me, uh, when I look at it, one is that we do what we need to do to win the game. Uh, two, obviously, uh, we would like to uh, keep the point totals down. Three, we, we would like to get the ball back to the offense as soon as we possibly can. So, and uh, obviously we're not trying to give up big chunk yards, big plays, um, you know, but as far as the stats go, uh, you know, like I said last week, I don't really pay any attention to them. Um, you know, it's more of a factor of us trying to put our players in position to succeed and for us to win the game. And really, ultimately, as a defense, what you're trying to do is limit the points and get the ball back to the offense. So, and, and that's kind of the way uh, we look at it. We approach it. Um, ultimately, I mean, you'd love to go in in every game and the offense has, you know, minus yards and, you know, you intercept every pass they throw, you know, but, you know, this is a tough league. Um, you know, coordinators are good. Offensive players are good. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, they're going to make plays. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I said, we, what you're trying to do is win the game. All right, time for one more. We'll go to Omar. I have an important question on Keenan Allen in terms of he's one of the better route runners in the, in the NFL. How difficult is it to kind of get some of your best cornerbacks on him considering how much he works inside in the slot? Yeah, I, I would say Keenan, Keenan Allen is a, is a very good receiver in this league. Uh, I would say he's a, you know, a, he's a very good route runner. Uh, he makes big catches for him in big situations. Um, you know, third down, red area, two minute, like, uh, you know, he, he he's a very talented receiver. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, we got a big, like I said, we got a big challenge. They got, they got other guys. Um, you know, Guyton, um, 
you know, like that, that can take a top off a of defense, Mike Williams, you know, Hunter Henry, uh, they have, they have so many weapons, their backs out of the backfield, pick a back. It doesn't matter who it is, you know, Eckler, uh, Jackson, Pope, uh, Kelly, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Like uh, these guys are very good offense. They got, they present you with a lot of problems and they got a lot of good players everywhere. And, and Keenan Allen's a big part of that. So, like I said, we, we got a huge challenge this week in front of us. Um, and again, our, our, our goal, our time, focus, and energy is, you know, putting, putting our guys in the best position to succeed. Morning, Coach. Um, could you give us the top three reasons why Jason Sanders is kicking so well right now? <laughs> well, I, I think it's my opinion. Um, we have a very good rapport right now and a very clean operation with the snaps and the holds. Um, obviously, any time that, uh, that that triumphant is working very well, you know, it seems like to the kickers in the past, and obviously with Jason now, that they're really able to get a good, clean picture uh, of what's happening on the hit. Uh, and then he's just in a good rhythm. You know, as, as we all know, and whatever our, our chosen profession is, there's times when you just find that nice rhythm and things are going and they're going smoothly and things are clicking. That's sort of where he is right now. Um, and he's playing with a lot of confidence. Adam? Yeah, Danny, I wanted to ask about how crazy Sunday was with you guys missing a bunch of coaches. I know uh, I think almost everybody <laughs> had multiple roles. What was your responsibility beyond coaching special teams on Sunday? And how do you think the staff handled uh, all the craziness? Well, I, I think we handled it uh, very, very well. You know, it's, you know, we're always in the next guy up mentality, whether it's coaches, players, just as an organization, especially obviously this year during the pandemic. So, uh, you know, whatever everybody's opportunities are, whatever roles you need to, to pick up or, or transfer, you know, I think uh, we've talked about it since since last spring and obviously have worked through it uh, during the season. So when those things come up, we feel like we're gonna be in good position to, uh, to just roll with whatever comes at us. Cameron? Hey, Danny, how do you, uh, I guess, overcome the natural worry or fear that comes when you hear something like that? Some, a coach in your staff has tested positive and not knowing how that would affect you in one way or the other. Well, again, I, I don't spend any time even thinking about it, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you know, it's a pandemic. Anything can happen. You can do any, everything absolutely uh, correct and properly and follow every guideline uh, and still end up uh, with the virus. Uh, so I, I don't even, it doesn't even enter my mind. I just come in every day and, you know, do my job and uh, don't even think about it. Travis. Hey, good morning, coach. I wanted to ask you about Durham Smythe, who had to leave mid-game in this game. And when he missed the San Francisco game a few weeks ago, Coach Flores had told us about the impact that has on who dresses for game day. I just wanted to get your take on Durham's special teams ability and the impact that he, he makes for you guys when he is available for you out there on special teams. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, Durham probably doesn't get enough credit. Um, you know, he's you know, as an available player, you know, he's going to play three or four phases for us uh, based on the week and, and how his uh, playtime is, is set up to both in the kicking game and offensively. Uh, very trustworthy, very accountable. Um, so, you know, anytime you don't have those guys, it's, it's a knock. Uh, but we feel very, very confident in, in anything we ask Durham to do. Uh, good football player, a good leader, and we're happy to have him. Josh. Hey, Danny, good morning. I know this play wasn't under your department, but how thrilled were you for um, Mac Hollins when you saw him bring in that touchdown, especially considering, you know, the importance that he brings to, to special teams since week one? Uh, you, you know, again, uh, anything, anything we can do to win the game and whoever's making those plays to win the game, I'm, uh, I'm all for it. I, I'm happy for any player, whether it's a you know, an offensive defensive player, when those guys have to step up, if they make a play in the kicking game and just like the guys that are, you know, predominantly kicking game role players, uh, when they get their opportunity, you know, offensively or defense. Uh, so, you know, very happy for Mac and obviously a big play in the game. 
uh, and just very happy for the team. Joe. Hey, Danny, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, obviously, Jason uh, did one from 56, which is, I, I believe, a career long. He's really good from 50 plus throughout his career. Uh, I'm curious, in practice, do you guys even bother doing the 58 or 60 yarder? Have, has he successfully tried or made, uh, you know, a 60 yarder in practice? Uh, he has, you know, week in and week out, we have uh, uh, a certain number of kicks we'd like to hit in certain positions on the field, you know, high, low, hashes, middle of the field, whatever it may be. Uh, and, you know, routinely we ask him to hit some of those longer field goals. Uh, so, uh, again, anytime we send Jason out, uh, you know, his job and, and our job when, when, when that group goes out on the field is to score points. So, you know, if we're sending them out there, we feel confident in what we're asking them to do. Every right, time for one more, we'll go to Safed. Hey, Coach. You know, I just wanted to ask a little bit more about the coaching situation on Sunday. Did you have any anybody in particular that helped you out on special teams, or did, did any you know other assistants kind of stand out as playing a bigger, significant role in, in helping the communication, getting guys on and off the field, things like that? Well, again, you know, I'm not going to get into a lot of that stuff. I think Flo's talked about it. You know, it's, you know, we had a lot of people step up. We have a lot of people ready to handle a lot of different roles. So, you know, it's an outstanding staff, you know, both not only the, uh, the coaching staff, but then you incorporate the strength guys who are always involved. Uh, so there, there's always, you know, guys that do a lot more than, than a lot of people understand and know outside the building. Uh, and I think it just comes all with, with getting good people, hiring good staff, and then everybody understanding that you know, as things change, just like players, you know, you, Matt Collins came up earlier as going in to catch and touch. It's the same thing from a coach's staff. You never know when certain things are going to be asked of you. Uh, we have a great group that's always able to step up and handle whatever's presented to them.